So it's been about a year now that we've been physically working on some aspect of this project. And it's getting to the point now where we're getting to some really cool things. We're almost to the point where we need to pour the 10,000 pound keel. But for that, we need a smelter. If you've been following us on social media, you may have seen that we picked up an old oil tank to build a smelter out of. Well, the other morning I woke up to a quiet house and it turned out that Steve and Akiva had gone for a ride. Comes our new smelter tank. Hour and 40 minute drive away in Connecticut, $260 later, but it should be a much more diesel tank. So we get a look at it here as it comes around the corner. Guy's even gonna load it for us. It doesn't get better than that. Wish I had this equipment when you're getting the lead. So this is going to be our melting tank to melt 10,000 pounds of lead to pour the ballast keel. So we need to get a way to put the lead in. So I started cutting a hole out and it's almost ready to drop in. Here goes. There's a little bit of stuff to clean out. Messy. Just a little bit. Okay. Now we need a tarp. And then we can roll this over and see if we can get some of that gunk out of there. quick and easy part. All right, project for today is to work on the smelting tank. So I went to Sullivan Steel in Hoyoke, got a couple pieces of flat, a bunch of tubing. I'm gonna take that, cut it all apart, weld it back together. I'm gonna also use some of the steel plate I have over here. So I picked this up many moons ago. Not really sure exactly what I was going to do with it, but it was a good price. And you don't pass this kind of thing up when you do things like I do. So I use some of that. And we use the bandsaw here. Got everything down to size. And hopefully when I'm done, I'll have a cradle that that big tank will fit into. And that cradle will hopefully be able to support, what is it, five ton, 10,000 um, pounds? If not, Somebody might die. So, hope I do a good job today. I'm 
operating this GoPro confuses the living hell out of me. I'm so glad that I have Alex to do 90% of this stuff because you guys would never see videos if it was left up to me. I'm just not capable of this. I can build a boat, I can do a lot of things. I can't do videos, I can hardly operate the GoPro. Anyways, most of the pieces are cut now. So if you can look over here, <clears throat> we've got six legs and three stringers are gonna run all the way down the length of it and provide some support. So the next mission, as previously mentioned, is to get this plate out of here. So I lifted it up and I put this bolt underneath it. And if I crawl into the back and lift and roll, it should slide and roll on that bolt pretty easily and pretty easy. It's still really heavy. And uh, we'll see if we can weasel it out of here. And then, I don't know, it might be lunchtime after that. Let's see how it goes. All right. Let the battle commence. That's not bad. We'll just move it a little bit farther out and then I'll be able to draw what I need on it, take the grinder and carve it out. But my stomach is telling me it is lunchtime. So it's time to go feed the beast. Yeah, I went right to filming. Turned it on, started filming. I don't understand this machine. All right, so I had lunch. That was good. I was hungry. <clears throat> After lunch, I came out and I made a template and you can see here and that is the same arc as the barrel and I put that down here on the steel and then put in where I wanted my braces to go got that all drawn out now I'm going to get the grinder cut it off Oops. So I get the grinder and I'll cut it all out and I'll take it over to the tank and give it a test fit and I'll get this piece to fit really nicely and then I'll use that to make the next two. So there'll be three of these plates all together underneath to help support it. So I'll get set up here and start cutting with the grinder. Must have been fun. Well, this big fat grinder wheel I have on it, it cuts, but that thin one I had cut a lot faster. So I think I'm gonna go get a couple more of those and give the grinder a rest for a minute. And we'll see if we can't finish cutting this out. All right, all right, all right. So it's day two of the smelter build. And I finished cutting out these big steel plates, as you can see, and got all of the metal cut up. So now it is time to start welding. So this guy, this piece of tubular steel is gonna get welded to the tank. And then these three flat plate steel supports will get welded in place. And then there'll be two more pieces of tubular steel that go on the right and on the left. And then eventually the legs. So we'll see. It's looking a little dreary and cloudy up there. I don't know if Mother Nature is going to rain on us or not. If it starts to rain, i got to stop welding. 
but I'm gonna try to get as much done as I can here while the weather lets us. So let me set the GoPro up here. Got the legs put on the smelter tank today. A lot of welding. And used about 160 bucks worth of steel. But here it is. Took the long runs of tube steel on. And put those big plates. Welded on some legs. And added some extra support. These bars will help keep the legs from spreading apart. And they will also help keep the legs from sinking into the ground. Because, you know, when there's five tons on this. These are really going to want to just disappear. So that should go a long ways. Diagonal braces will keep the front up. And then the lead will come flowing out of here eventually. So now I'm going to get cleaned up, go get the tractor, and we'll see if we can flip this right side up and take a gander at it. All right, so I got the tractor. We're going to use that to help spin this around. And hopefully get it stood up. here with the trick, duh. Now we have our big, beautiful smelter set up. So we'll have to level it and probably dig down on the ground a little bit, probably bury those feet. We'll see how high we have to have it. But we need to make sure that the lowest part of the tank is higher than the highest part of our mold. So I made the legs a little long for now, figuring it would be easy enough to dig a little trench next to them and drag it over a little bit and drop it down. And then all of our lead's gonna get piled in there. And it'll come out here, we'll run another elbow and over, and then we'll put the ballast keel mold somewhere in here. So I don't want to get it too close to the boathouse. The last thing I want to do is set the boathouse on fire when we do this. That would be bad. Bad, 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 bad. Cool. 
I'm happy. We're getting closer and closer to doing the pour. Hopefully next weekend we'll fire this thing up and put the wheel weights in it and get those cleaned and start to figure out exactly how much lead we have. We have somewhere between, I don't know, six and 8,000 pounds. We're not really sure. Eight would be amazing. That means we only need to find two. Maybe we even have more. Who knows? Uh, well, we'll find out soon. Stay tuned.